Good afternoon, guys. Hope everybody's well. Today is February 9th, Friday. Hope all you guys are doing well. Markets are still doing very well, so I expect that, uh, you know, right now, as long as it's going well, just don't complain about it. Take as much money as you can. Swing trades seem to be working again now, as opposed to previously, 2022, 2023, day trades were better. So it seems to be working right now. Things might change again. You just got to know and be a little bit nimble and, and specific. All right. So one of the companies that I wanted to talk about is Shopify. Now, I know that most people know Shopify already, but that's not the point I'm trying to make. I think they have an underappreciated TAM, a total, a total addressable market that a lot of people don't understand well enough. So even though Shopify provides more than just an e-commerce website that allows merchants to be able to sell online, that is part of the story. Right now, they make more money from non-e-commerce subscriptions than they do from payments, capital, lending products, and all the other fees that they have. So I think Shopify can easily go much higher from here six times if they execute very, very well, which they have been doing. So my point of this presentation was just walk you through that portion of the story. Shopify started in the 2000s, started primarily as an e-commerce website for when Toby himself, the founder of the company, wanted to sell Surfboard. So then he built that product, started building more of that. When they went IPO, they had three or four products, which was Shopify, Shopify Plus, which is the extended product for mid-size and large companies, Shopify Payments, and then they've grown significantly from there. So the point of this presentation is to walk you through what that story is and why they can still, from this point on, where they are at $100 billion or so or a little less, can still 6x from here. Okay, so let's walk through that part of the story. All right, if you look at e-commerce overall, the penetration of e-commerce in most of the countries in the world, North America is the highest. It's probably closer to about 20%, even though some claims are 15%. Uh, Asia, specifically China is higher, but China is about 11 to 15% as well. And then Latin America and Europe are a little bit behind. So the penetration of e-commerce is still 15 to 20% in most places in the world. That means if there's $1 worth of product being sold, $8 of that is being bought offline, people going physically to buy stuff. $2 is, or $1, 20 cents is still being bought offline. Now, within the online portion, e-commerce platforms themselves, in terms of market share, Shopify is number one. They have a little over 2 million stores, 4 million if you count all the temporary stores and things of that nature, but they have 2 million store, over 2 million stores on their platform. WooCommerce is next with a little less than a million. Magento has been around for such a long time, still doesn't even have a quarter of the stores that Shopify has live. And then a lot of people talk about Salesforce being a competitor, Adobe, which is Magento being a competitor, big commerce. I mean, these guys are not even close. I don't even understand why you would put them in the same bucket. Shopify is dominant as a platform, easy to use, simple to manage, quick to get up and running and can scale, which is why a lot of merchants like them. Because of their platform story, because of their partnership story, a lot of customers can use them for more than just get up and running. They can even use them to scale. Okay. So that's the first part. They provide an e-commerce platform, but they have a largest market share in that platform. Overall, e-commerce is going to grow fairly significantly. You now, it may never get to the point where offline is less than e-commerce. It could get there. Right now, if you look at television and radio advertising versus digital, we're becoming an increasingly digital community. We're sitting at home on our phones, on our laptops, on our televisions, clicking on something and buying it as opposed to previously, we'd go somewhere and buy it. Even if you look at things like grocery is becoming digital. So e-commerce platforms are becoming more and more useful for all merchants. And what used to be the big up draw from COVID, a lot of merchants who had to shut their physical stores, go online, now is becoming for them as they start to open their stores, Shopify is helping them there as well. So $13 billion, $13 billion market by 2029, just 2028, just for e-commerce platforms, okay? Now, that share that Shopify has just in the US is very, very small. They have about 10% share. So it's a very small percentage of the US e-commerce market share is owned by Shopify. The opportunity is large. Does it mean they'll get more than 20%? Not sure. But that's 20%. That's double from here in terms of GMV. But the opportunity is not just with e-commerce. Opportunity is all the other products that they can do to expand it. Um, that's my story. Even if they double their share of e-commerce platforms, the fact that that has so many upselling products, the attach rate gives them a much bigger opportunity than right now. Over 
2,000 strong big brands, for example, companies uh, like Skims, which is Kim Kardashian's brand, or even Kylie Jenner's brand, all use Shopify. A lot of big brands have given up their internal stores and they've gone to using Shopify. Steve Madden, the shoe company, all of them are starting to use Shopify right now. Now, besides that, the big push, as everybody has done, is AI. Shopify helps you as a customer being able to, if you want to shop on a Shopify store, get recommendations, ask for specific things, look for products that might meet this. If you want to put a theme, for example, one of the demos that was shown was, I'm going to put together a Japanese style tiki party. What do I need? It actually came back and said, here are all the products that you need. Here are the four stores. We would put all this in a basket for you and buy it seamlessly. That's phenomenal. It also helps you as a store owner to be able to manage your store more effectively with the AI. Now, Shopify has multiple dimensions to it. Whether you're doing it online or offline, Shopify, and Shopify can help you with payments, point of sales terminal, Shopify plus functionality. Second, you want to sell digitally online, global, or local, you can still manage it in Shopify. You want to sell direct to the customer without having someone else in between, you can do that. Or you want to be able to sell to business customers, Shopify customers can do that as well. If you want to sell it to third-party marketplaces, like you want to be able to list on Google Shops, you want to sell on Amazon, you want to be able to sell on meta products, such as, for example, Instagram or TikTok, Shopify is a seamless solution to help you do that. It utterly helps you with their own solution to manage your front office, which is how do you present your website. It also helps you with inventory management, helps you with tax management. It helps you whether you want to do it on mobile or on desktop. So what they're doing is making sure that the total surface area that they can cover for anybody starting a business or running a business, Shopify is the number one solution for them to be able to do it. They help you all the way from marketing to analytics, tell you how you can do better. Practically speaking, everything you need, Shopify has it. Now, you can start with just the very simple primitives, such as you can put your products online, put your list of products, put your customers, take your orders. Then you can extend it across to flows, which is how do I manage my products across multiple different stores. Or you can then go to developer-specific tools to be able to use the dashboard. And then finally, you can have it for the store itself. You can have a theme store for yourself, or you can do it in an app store. You can do it in multiple different ways. You can distribute in a lot of different places. Now, when... One of the things they talk about, which I'm not really 100% sure about, is they say their customer acquisition cost is much lower with Shopify. I'm not sure about that. Well, let me tell you why. Let's say you are starting an e-commerce store right now. You have a lot of choices. You can just say, I don't want to go through all the hassle. I'm going to ship my product directly to Amazon. Amazon has all the users and the buyers and the customers already coming in there. They come, they see my products, they buy it. I don't have to handle the inventory. I don't have to handle the shipping. I don't have to handle the payment. Amazon does everything for me. For that you will end up paying at least 30 to 40% of your total cost of the product to Amazon. In many cases, it's 40%. Why? 10% is the fees for selling. Another 5% is for inventory management. Another 5% is for payment. Another 10% right now, they're starting for advertising without which you won't be able to sell on Amazon very effectively. Now, the customer acquisition cost, if you had to promote it within Shopify itself, promote your own store, either organically via SEO or even with paid ads, they're saying the conversion is a lot better because they're able to provide a much better, simpler product to use. And that requires you to be able to use the customer acquisition cost that is much better as well. Questionable, but still, you can and will be able to make the case that they do a better job than most other companies do. Now, because of that, the renewal rates are very high. Shopify can lend you money. So if you are a seller in Shopify and you want to be able to get some money loan to be able to expand your business, you go to a bank, most of these guys don't do a good job. Banks take years, they want a personal collateral, way too much work. Shopify lending, a lot better. They understand how much you've done business, understand how your store is growing, understand how many customers like you, how many customers leave reviews, very happy to lend you money and they make money that way as well. So if you're a new business, what's the unique thing that Shopify does better than everybody else? It's very easy to get started. For less than a dollar, sometimes a day, or in many cases, you can get started for free and then pay over the next few months. Very easy to start a digital native only business. Second, you can sell it globally. Third one, they have a developer platform and a ecosystem that gives you access to three to 10,000 different partners. Marketing solutions, you've got covered. Inventory, if you wanna manage it very effectively online, that also you've got covered. If you want something to be able to do more effective advertising online, they got you covered. Then design your store. You need partners to be able to make the store look better, pop out a lot more. They got you covered. And then leverage. If you want to be able to scale your business to a billion dollars, like what Skim has done, Shopify uniquely allows you to do that as well. With the AI solutions of Shopify, they give you the ability as well to be able to manage your entire platform for a consumer as an end user very, very well. So the AI solutions are a big push for them right now. 
Now, because they've done this so well, they've been able to grow their business from a GMV, which is gross merchandise value. Total amount of products sold on Shopify has gone from 40 billion before 2018 to about 200 billion right now. 200 billion. This is a ridiculously large number. At the same time, subscription solutions has gone to nearly 5.6 billion. They are growing tremendously. So this, as it grows, creates a direct opportunity for subscription revenue for Shopify to grow. They only grow if their merchants grow. So their interests are very aligned. Okay, now what Shopify also allows you to do, which is a big problem for a lot of sellers, is how do I do marketing? I don't like to do marketing because they give you the ability to be able to market effectively online. You can do everything from predictive modeling and segmentation to detection of anomalies and audience generation completely on the Shopify platform. Very good for that as well. Now, Shopify initially started with just a simple Shopify store and Shopify Plus along with Shopify payments. Now they have over 20 to 30 different products in a lot of different areas. So the reason why it has become very good is because they've grown their total addressable market. Initially they started, they were just an e-commerce platform for small, medium businesses. Now they offer lending solutions, merchant solutions, offline payments, uh, point of sale solutions, exportify solutions, tons of different things. Now, even within their core e-commerce platform solution, they're still a leader, right? Even though some of these companies have been around for decades, more and longer than Shopify has, they've just done a better job of anything else. And also number one by far on G2, which is a online review platform. Now, conversion, this is a question I have. There are some challenges with Shopify. Uh, I absolutely agree as an investment person. One big challenge for Shopify is they make a lot of claims that seem a little bit more stretching the truth than really talking about what the facts are. Uh, now, the only way for you to be able to really figure out whether conversion is better is if you keep two stores side by side. Nobody I know does that to a large extent and see what the conversion is on one versus the other. The claim is the conversion is a lot better. Second is Shopify is very richly valued. You'll see that when we go through the stock numbers. This company, even because it's executing so well, is just ridiculously valued, very, very high. Now, the margins are getting a little bit less because it's not like a software company margins, which makes 70, 80% margins. Their subscription business makes 70, 80% margin, but their payments business and some of the other businesses bring the margins down. So they're not a very high margin business in the relative sense of the word. Good margin. They're definitely higher margin than a coupon, which is a store. And they're definitely higher margin than an Amazon, which is purely an e-commerce retailer. But they're still not very high margins, like a software company. Now, when they initially, um, during COVID, if you remember, a lot of companies that had stores, small and medium businesses, mom and pop stores, they had to suddenly go online. So they went to Shopify, started their stores. In 2021, 2022, they started selling online. Then as slowly the economy started opening and stores started opening and COVID started subsiding, these businesses went back to offline. And Shopify said, hey, why don't we help you with your offline stuff? Why don't we help you with a point of sale terminal? Why don't we help you with the cross-sell capability? That's how they started expanding their TAM. So not only helping businesses with online, now they've even gone offline. And the offline bookings because of that has increased dramatically as well. Right, so this is what I was talking about. They've increased their total addressable market very, very well by increasing the number of products, type of products, from tax products to B2B products to shipping products, all the way to marketplace products as well. They've done a very, very good job. The TAM initially was small. This is a $20 billion market. Doing e-commerce platforms for businesses of all sizes, about a $200 billion market. Offline, allowing you to be able to sell and take payments offline is a $473 billion TAM. But if you start doing what is really possible, which is merchant services such as lending, credit management, et cetera, that's 136 billion. And if you expand that even more, their goal is to be able to get to $800 billion market. That's how they really expanded the TAM. So when people ask me how much more opportunities for Shopify Co, can you double? Dude, they can go six times from here right now. Just look at this, from the IPO time itself, they went from 46 billion to 18 times more than that. They were about 120 million in revenue. They've gone to 50 times the revenue, $5.8 billion. They had four products, they had 20 products. So yeah, if you're saying Shopify is a company that has been there yesterday, I wanna go after a big growth market. Shopify is gonna grow, they're gonna grow very well. Are they gonna grow like what they did before? They're not gonna grow, but they will still 6X or 5X from here easily, I think. Now, 
e-commerce penetration overall, if you look at it from multiple countries, and still in the U.S. itself is about 21%. North America overall is about 15%. Now, Canada is low, Mexico is low, a lot of South America is low as well. Look at this. So even now, the penetration of our e-commerce is still fairly low, even in 2023. So this is only going to go higher. More people are trying to do more things online than they are offline. So what has Shopify done very effectively? They've been able to grow the TAM by growing to more geography, providing more products, going adjacent products, offering point of sale terminal, going offline has been a big move for them. Offering merchant services has been a big move for them. Offering lending products, offering tax products. Those have been big moves that have increased the opportunity for them. And so it allows you to be able to start a small company in a very simple way, migrate and run the business, market effectively and go to other third-party markets such as Etsy or Amazon and other places, take payments from offline as well. And then you can actually use Shopify audiences and other products to be able to get new customers to your company. Very, very effective. Increasing and providing a solution for a merchant across a lot of different areas. Now, <clears throat> they started with simple subscription solutions and now some of the products that they offer have been able to directly increase their cumulative growth rate to about 70%. And as percentage revenue, these things are very, very small now. These will grow even further. That's Shopify. So that's the background about Shopify as well. Uh, just to give you context, I'm going to summarize for you before we go into the next part. Shopify is a very large company already. They're about $120 billion in market cap. But even with that, they have a large opportunity ahead of them. Uh, and, it, and I think this is one of the better opportunities if you want a safe company that does execute very well. And we'll go through the five-step process now to show you why it is that good. Okay. We always start with the annualized revenue statement. Oh, look at this. This is beautiful. They went from $300 million in revenue. Eight years, they've gone to $5.8, $5.4 billion, doing about $6 billion, trailing 12 months. That is 20x, guys. That's phenomenal. Margins went from what, 60%? No, margins have gone down to about 50% right now, 54%, something like that. They've lost a lot of money last year. They made a little bit of money before. They lost a lot of money last year. And now they should be getting on the positive track. So big problem is the fact that they were losing money. But let's see on a quarterly basis. On a quarterly basis, growth has slowed. Well, it actually slowed. Now it's grown up again. 20%, 15% growth. This was a low point. And from there, they've been growing back again. This is good. This is good trajectory. Growth is back. That is a good thing. 50%, 54% margins, growth side, and they've started to turn a profit. That's a good sign. That's a very good sign. And so that's something that you want to watch for. That's one of the big reasons why this is showing up on the radar again. Balance sheet, they have about six and a half billion dollars in current assets, debt of about a billion, very manageable from cash flow perspective. Yeah, they make positive cash flow. They had a little bit of a challenge before, but now they're cash flow positive as well. No challenges. I think the big challenge is going to be just the fact that they're expensive. Ah, look at that. Price to sales is 17 times for a company doing about 20%. What was in the quarter? 30%? Let's go back there. So they're growing on a quarterly basis, 30% growth. And for that, you want me to give you what? 17 times sales? And for a company doing margins, what? 50% margins? Uh, net margin, 41%. That's only in the quarter, though. They're going to have a little bit of a challenge on this one. So good, well-managed business. Margins are very, very good at 40%. I want to see what the long-term margin profile would be, probably in the 30% range, which is still good. 50% gross margins, 30% net margins, very, very good business. But for that business, you want me to give you 17 times sales? Well, this is going to change, but the PE is ridiculously high. Just for the last quarter, the PE is probably in the thousands or so. Shopify is expensive, guys. That's another thing, which is a big challenge. Okay. So now let's go to the monthly chart. The monthly chart says long time base building, beautiful leg up, consolidation stage three, markdown stage four. I can't believe this was actually a $22 stock at some point of time. And I also can't believe it was $175 stock at some point of time. Beautiful base actually. On the long-term basis, this is a stage two markup. Of course, we'll adjust it as we go along, but this is probably, going to have a resistance somewhere at least in the 114 zone, uh, but it's been building very, very well. Okay, on the weekly basis, you can see again this chart. I'm gonna move this to base to over here, move this on the weekly as well. It is starting to do a good job of being able to 
be on a market phase. It's got movement all the way up to 114, guys. This is not a problem. When is earnings coming out? We'll see earnings in a little bit. So the big challenge still is valuation. On a scale of 1 to 10, and the fundamentals, I probably gave them a 7. The big challenge being, two big challenges being, the valuation is rich, number one. And number two, they're, they have to show me at least a year of consistent profitability and growth. Um, they can, you can't wing it with one time alone. So on the weekly chart, still an up. Uh, this must be a 52-week high. Yeah, but definitely a 52-week high going through a lot of movement and challenges and up. Yeah, 52 week high, as you can see, um, they went through a left shoulder, head, right shoulder, moved down. After the move down, this has been consistently up. <coughs> Moving average is pointing up, strong move. Seems to be getting a little bit of resistance even here in the 1991 zone, 52 week high is 91. Still going to go to 114, I think. A very good room for it. And they have earnings coming up in a day. Oh, next week. So. Buy earnings expect, I think after earnings, these guys are going up. Uh, I don't know anything about the earnings, so I can't tell you for sure. But if the earnings are good, they're definitely going to 115 zone very, very easily. RSI is still not stretched, pointing the right direction, right direction, but still not too stretched. If you go back before, it seems to be a lot more stretched here. So that's not bad. MACD is pointing in the right direction. Shopify, <clears throat> $115 billion, $6 billion in terms of revenue. Gross margins of 50%, net margins probably in the 35, 40%. Right now it's 40%, may come down a little bit. Um, where does it go from here? Six times from here is roughly about a trillion dollars. For a trillion dollars, um, let's see, if you want to be able to do a decent PE, let's say Shopify goes from $6 billion in current revenue, $6.5 billion, to $10 billion in two years, 2026. So $10 billion, 50% uh, gross margins is $5 billion in gross margin. EBITDA business, which is the net margin, is roughly in the 30%. Let's say it's a little bit less than that. $3 billion is okay. So $3 billion, even if you do a 30, that's 90. That's still expensive. So what you want to be able to think through is to say, okay, if they're doing a 40% margin, $4 billion business, and you want to give it a 40 PE, but they're growing very fast, right? So growing very fast, 40, 60 PE is not a bad thing. 40 PE will give you 160 billion, 60 PE will give you 240 billion. So in two years, 240 billion, almost a double of where it is right now. Not exactly, but almost a double, actually a little more than double. So on the high end, it could double from here in two years. On the low end, it'd probably go to 140 billion, which is about a 10% move, 20% move from here in two years. That's what I would think about the business. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think and leave me your comments. Have a good weekend, everyone.